Is there a model of life coaching that tends to create better results? Uh, we've trained thousands and thousands of students at this point in Mind Valley Certified Life Coach. And what we have, te we tested this model first on a large set of people, and then now we've tested it over thousands of people. We have over 1,100 case studies of people who have tested this model further on, <laughs> on their own lives and also on their clients' lives. And it seems to create really predictable and amazing results. And it has four separate parts. The first part is what we call presence. Mm -hmm. The way to understand it is that at any given time, you are a function of either your past or your future. That mm -hmm. tends to be the case for human beings. We always borrow something from the past and say, this is the way I am because of. Or we uh, present it to the future or get anxious about the future. You say, I'm doing this because I want to, right? And either of those situations takes away from the power of actual creation. Any creation that anybody may have, anything that you do create, is never created in the past and never created in the future. They're only thoughts you have. Either they're thoughts of the past or thoughts of the future. But creation doesn't happen with thoughts. Th creation happens with thoughts applied into action. Right. So the first thing that we invite everybody to do is to suspend the past, suspend the future, and get present to this moment. Mm -hmm. Because if you can be present to this moment, you are finally in control of the past and the future while doing whatever needs to be done in the present to have the past or the future that you want. Right. So presence is the first practice, mm -hmm. is the first foundation of actually being able to coach anyone. You have to bring them to a place of presence. The second thing is what we call organize your mind. See, life coaching is very much about being able to organize thoughts in a way where they are supportive of the journey we want to have as individuals, or our clients want to have as an individual. Your clients are not just gonna come to you and say, uh, life coach me. Yeah, That's not what happens. Yeah. Right? They go, I have this problem in my life or I have this desire in my life and therefore unfulfilled. Right? So they're going to come to you with something they have thought about before that they desire, they want to get over, or whatever that might be. And to be able to help somebody do that, you have to look at their thinking patterns or what are the thoughts that they are really acknowledging and accepting as their truth and what thoughts they have not even considered. Right? So what more, more likely than happens is that if somebody's coming to a, with a challenge or a desire in your life to you, that they are operating from what we call disempowered thoughts. Mm -hmm. A disempowered thought is, the simplest way to understand is that when you think of that thought, you feel contracted. Let's say if somebody thinks, oh, I'm not good enough. The feeling makes you feel contracted. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm not confident. I am an introvert. I'm an extrovert, doesn't matter. It, can make, it doesn't make you feel contracted. If it makes you feel contracted, it makes you feel like you need to go in a shell, that's a disempowered thought. That's not a thought that is helpful to you in creating what you want to create in your life, right? Now, the counter of that is what we call an empowered thought. Empowered thought is any thought that makes you feel expanded. Mm -hmm. That in the feeling in your body, you go, wow, I feel great. I feel like I can do things, right? So for example, you feel, I'm confident. You feel expanded. You feel, you, they, they love me. You feel expanded. Mm -hmm. um, I am needed. You feel expanded. I am good enough. You feel expanded. So the more you feel expanded and your thoughts are more in support of your expansion, you get to tap into your most empowered state. And when you're in an empowered state, your actions are more congruent with your desires and your actions are more congruent to creation of the person that you always wanted to be. So you're further leaning into a new identity, a new version, a new discovery of self, right? And when you're in that state, any challenge or any desire is much easier fulfilled. Right, so that's the second thing, or the second vertical is we show you how to organize your mind in a way where you switch from disempowered thoughts to empowered thoughts. Actually, so the third thing, which is what we call bioengineering. Mm -hmm. Bioengineering, simply understood, is the understanding that you are an identity that you have perceived of yourself to be, but it is just a make-believe. It's a function of certain habits that you've created for yourself, based on some perceptions of the past or perceptions of what should be the truth based on the future with very little acknowledgement of understanding that it is transient, like how anything else, like, like time is transient, that it can you, you keeps passing and you keep changing, your identity is the same, which means you can change your identity at any given time. It just will require the series of efforts for you to be able to realize. But the first step to do 
is to actually understand what is your new identity that you want to lean into, what you want to merge with. But you must merge with your new identity for you to be realizing the life that you want to realize, which is the third pillar, which is bioengineering. It's supported by habits. Mm -hmm. And the final vertical is what we call connectedness. Connectedness is you feeling connected to your higher purpose. A purpose often gets misunderstood as something that will be for a lifetime. Purpose is also transient. Purpose changes with the evolution of life based on the focus that you have in life, based on agreements you have in life, based on desires that you have in life, based on what you feel called to in life, based on the experiences of your life. And so purpose needs to A, be discovered, which is again, most of the individuals across the globe right now suffer with lack of purpose. And that's also because lack of understanding of purpose. And then being able to help your clients define their living purpose. We call purpose the living purpose because it's a living, breathing direction of life. Mm. And it evolves as time evolves. 